It's a lengthy gospel. The gospel today, my dear friends, contains two overlapping miracles. These two miracles of healing are narrated one after the other. That is why they are called overlapping miracles. The cure of the woman hemorrhaging for the past 12 years and a girl of 12 who is also very sick and she is the daughter of a synagogue official named Jairus. Why are these two miracles so closely fitted together? Let us try to reflect a little bit about each of the two miracles. Let us first reflect about the experience of the woman who had been bleeding for the past 12 years. This woman had been to several doctors, several experts, several consultants, but her condition did not change. Her condition did not improve. This woman had already exhausted all her savings in the process, but she did not get any healing. Right away, my dear friends, the gospel reading at this point highlights the power of Jesus in contrast with the failure of the doctors. You see right away the power of the Lord in contrast with the failure of the doctors. The unnamed woman thought, if I could only touch his clothing, I shall get well. This is deep faith. This woman wanted to touch the garment of Jesus in secret because she wanted to remain hidden. She was probably ashamed of her illness and it would put her in a state of legal impurity and convey ritual uncleanness to all those who come in contact in contact with her. I'm sure some of you know that in ancient belief, the personal effects of the healer have potent powers like handkerchiefs, like aprons, or any personal effects belonging to the healer was thought to possess healing powers. The person of the healer himself including, interestingly, including the shadow of the healer was regarded as potent. It was regarded as powerful. It was regarded and believed as effective. And his garment or shadow, as the case may be, was looked upon as an extension of the healer's personality. That was the belief of the people during the time of the Lord. And I think there is a similarity here with a cultural practice among Catholics, even those in the Philippines, among us, when we go to churches, when we go to chapels, we wipe the statues with our handkerchiefs, the images, the pictures of saints with our hankies. When we go to Quiapo, we want to come close to the Nazarene and wipe the Nazarene with our handkerchief. Recall to the eagerness of the Filipinos to come close to the Holy Father. When the Holy Father visited the Philippines some years ago and include here the penchant of Filipinos to touch even the politicians and even movie stars and even the Santo Nino. Because we believe that these are powerful images and some of them have potent powers. Who touch my garment? The Lord said. Because he wanted to enter into a personal relationship with whomever he just cured. And the Lord said to the woman, Your faith has made you well, and he wanted to enter into a personal relationship with his, with a person 
whom he just healed. Let us go to the second story. The twelve-year-old daughter of Jairus. Jairus already has a strong faith in as much as no human means could do anything more for his daughter. And he approached the Lord to ask him to save his daughter from impending death. Hers is a young life, full of promise, nipped in the bud. And Jesus told Jairus, Jairus, fear is useless. What is needed is trust. The child is not dead. The child is only sleeping. My dear brothers and sisters, between these two miracles, there is what we call a crescendo of faith. Our reader here is a musician. You know what is crescendo? There is a crescendo of faith. We pass on from the original faith of Jairus who has given up all human hope and has trusted Jesus. And from the primitive faith of the woman is still guided by selfish motives to the second faith of the woman transformed by her personal relationship with the Lord. And finally, to the full faith of Jairus who believed in the power of Jesus to raise the dead. In short, faith is at the center of our double miracle today. What is faith? I believe reading the following many years ago that gives us something, an idea about what faith is and what doubt even is. Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night. Faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step. Faith soars on high. Doubt questions. Who believes? Faith answers I. And I remember also the song when I was reflecting about this gospel. Early this morning, I remember the song, Walk with faith in your heart and you'll never walk alone. And also, I personally believe that a little faith will bring your soul to heaven. A great faith will bring heaven to your soul. My dear friends in Christ, Faith does not believe that God can. Faith believes that God will. Faith is to believe what we do not see. And the reward of this faith is to see what we believe. Amen.